Welcome to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth, bringing you interviews with top business professionals, empowering you to understand our current business climate and the successes and struggles other business professionals have overcome. Here's your host, Nick Boer. Welcome to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast. Today, we have Brandon Stevens from Scouter on with us. Brandon, welcome to the show. Nick, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Great, great. Hey, you know, Brandon, I, I know you've been uh, really doing some really cool stuff in the uh, in the hiring and the recruiting space, uh, in, in the business you're really working on building. Uh, help me understand a little bit about what you know what your background is. You know what what kind of brought you to where you are now. Yeah, I, I, I uh, born and raised in the Wilmington area at the coast of North Carolina, went to business school in East Carolina, graduated in um, 99 and, and got into banking and finance at that point in my career and, and uh, was doing everything from BD to customer engagement, customer support. I even got into loan originations and some underwriting. Then I got into um, sort of the, the financial, the, the, really the business analyst side of the industry and wholesale mortgages and really fell in love with data. I always like conversations with people and learning more about uh, individuals, and, and that sort of led me to recruiting in that space. It was sort of my side project, right? You know, they, they say, "Hey, you're an next athlete, and you've um, like to talk, and so, and and you're good with people. So why, why don't you have us build a team?" I said, "Sure, I'd, I'd love to try it." And I just, I, I always enjoyed it. So I uh, transitioned out of finance after the '08 crash, stayed in a little bit longer to around 2012, 2013, and then. I had a little mortgage company I was able to sell during that crash to a, a community bank. And I say sell, they kind of, they kind of bought my data and, and bought our resources as, as opposed to buying the company. But I learned a, a lesson there about how to build something recession-proof, how to pay a lot of attention to very accurate, reliable data. And, um, and I, I had an opportunity to go recruit at a large recruiting agency in the technology space. And I took that opportunity in 2014, 2015, and – that's where the, the idea of Scouter hit. It was coming from sort of the highly regulated, sort of data-driven, underwritten, underwriting-driven, you know the space, is highly reg regulated in, in consumer banking, wholesale banking, obviously financial planning. But what I noticed in recruiting is that that is not the case, and it was sort of the Wild West. I was like, where's your data? How are you guys making the right decisions? There wasn't much customer or client engagement on the company side. There was literally almost no mention of culture or work styles. And it was alarming to me, um, wow. with all due respect to people in recruiting that, that work very hard. So, uh, you know, my background sort of led me to that point, and we saw an opportunity in 20, 2015, 2016. Okay, okay. And, and, and tell me a little bit, so, so before we go into a few specifics, just give me a, what, what's a, what's a high-level overview of your company, Scouter, and, and what you guys really do on a day-to-day -day basis to help support companies? Yeah, so we, Scouter is a uh, really advanced marketplace. We use a lot of artificial intelligence, really specifically natural language processing, to tell the story, if you will, of each team manager in position and candidate. And in real time, we score every candidate to every role. And so we've automated a lot of those uh, variables in recruiting, uh, all the way down from deep engagement to sourcing, uh, then uh, communicating and engagement between manager or candidate and, uh, and or candidate, as well as the matching and screening. So we wanted to build this profile that would give a much higher level of standardization of content, if you will, and context between the potential that people have and the potential that the managers and, and positions and teams have to those people. And it was, uh, it was how the platform came together. So it's a dual-sided, sort of a blind, intuitive intake system that really creates your new resume, not only creating your resume, but it also is your first-level interview all in one process. And so Scouter automatically scores each candidate to every position, so you could find magic in a number of places where you may not have been looking. Wow, uh, Brandon, that's uh, that's very interesting because I know, 
you know, in, in my space in the, in, in the financial industry for the last 20 years, you know, I can tell you I've talked to numerous HR directors, numerous owners that, especially in today's world, it seems like it's getting harder and harder to attract and, and have a streamlined hiring process to actually find the quality candidates they're looking for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, there's, there's ta- people are talented. I, I want to be clear here. People mm-hmm. are talented, and and they're, the environments they're in, the opportunities they are given, uh, sometimes they're not even sure where they need to be. Right, and yep. this is not a unilateral qualification process like it has historically been. In other words, it's not just a one way street of who qualifies. This is bilateral. But there's, there's just so many talented people in this country that are not given the right visibility. They're not given the right opportunities. There's, their, their true potential is not well-defined. And that, those are, these are some of the things that we are working very hard to solve. Okay. Uh, I think that's great. I think there's, uh, I think there's really unlimited potential in, in the space you guys are in because, you know, I know a ton of, of what I will call recruiting firms or recruiters and headhunters, uh, but they really, you know, for the most part, what I've, you know, my experience has been, oh, well, we have a personal profile we're going to have you fill out, these six, eight questions. That's been the norm based on my experience over the last 10, 15 years. Where do you, where do you guys feel that, you know, in addition to some of the artificial intelligence and the technology, how do you really feel that you guys can really help companies take it to the next level when it comes to getting the right people in the right seats because of that technology? Yes. It starts with discovery, right? The machine. Uh, this is a funny transition we're going through now. Not not funny. That's a bad choice of words. But there's an interesting transition we're going through now as sort of a in, in technology. It's right. It's really natural language processing and machine learning. Uh, Reed Hoffman, who was a found, who, who is the, one of the founders at LinkedIn, uh, just created a company called Inflection.ai, and they say. For decades, we've been we've been teaching humans the language of machines, and now we're teaching machines the language of humans. And this is NLP, and it's very important. This is a really big moment in our industry. Um, and I'll pause there for a second. When we think of recruiting, personally speaking, and I, and I think this is very well validated, that the recruiter of today needs to think like a fiduciary, like you do. Yeah. They need to think of themselves as a true consultant. You really need to get in and get discovery. In fact, I'd walk away from opportunities with companies and their candidates where you do not have that ability or, you, or they do not allow that because you're not going to be able to service them appropriately. So when we're teaching the machine, if you will, uh, 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 the language of humans, we're talking about sentiment, right? You know, skills, for example, skills correlation. So if you're not a direct match to a skill, what are the opportunities or potential that you have to transition them to, say, this other skill that could be relatively similar? Think of Google Sheets versus Microsoft Excel. Right. But this industry is, this industry is highly flawed. So to answer your question before I get off on one of my tangents, it, it really is about discovery. And, and so what I mean by discovery is pretty clear. So when you're in a position, for example, as a company and a manager, at the manager seat, you need to understand what your team culture is, right? These are expectations that we have for each other in the team environment, whether you're remote or on site together or hybrid. Secondarily, you need to have a better understanding in that specific position about work styles. These are the natural tendencies in how an individual prefers to get his or her work done. So think of them as work personalities, if you will. These two things are almost absent in the sort of headhunter game. Now, there's a unique perspective about that. Decades ago, the headhunter was a revered position in his or her community. They got very entrenched into the community with companies and, and the people in, that, in their community, and they knew this information, at least at a, at, a, at a basic level. And that position was revered. And then, you know, from the job aggregators, the job boards, the big agencies that sort of sprung around, sprung about and, and became more digitized and commoditized, if you will, in the late 90s. Uh, has sort of eroded, in my opinion, has eroded the quality, again, not the people, but the quality of the industry. And what you've got now is sort of a conveyor belt of applications and interviews and people are trying to figure all this out. So you have to go back to discovery. 
right? Even mm-hmm. even you and your industry. But when I was in banking, discovery was a big deal. Yeah. What's your income? What are your assets? What's your right. credit score? Right. And so uh, you have to get down to the baseline information, and that is culture, work style. What are the few skills you know are needed? And what about skills gaps and skills gaps analysis? These are these things are absent in today's model, and they've done they've done damage to the experience of job seekers. Considerable experience damage to that experience as well. Look at turnover rates. Look at time to hire. Look at look at the uh, look at employee and or candidate sentiment. They've all been eroded through the last few years, and it's not just a, a pandemic thing. This was happening before that. So discovery is crucial. Of fixing this problem and okay. that is where recruiting in general has a step up okay so I, i'm curious now this and this is this is also from my perspective as well brandon i'm curious obviously you know we we can we can all assume from a company standpoint how you're helping companies you know with your with your platform and your technology is you're trying to help them cut through some of the red tape and, and really get them in front of the highest quality candidate that's best qualified for the position they're looking for. Is, is that an accurate statement? That's right. That discovery leads to a profile at the corporate level, at the company level rather. So our, our, our company side uh, platform profiles are broken down by the team. So there's, there's the company, there's who you are, what you do, where you are, all those good things. Then each team is a department, say sales, finance, uh, that's where team culture lives, you know, technology, et cetera. And there's a manager and or company administrator assigned in there that is sort of the super admin for that uh, organization. And then there's the positions. Okay. And so work styles live in the position. And so what we do is we combine through discovery, we combine sort of the first level interviewing all in one process. So not only are they getting to talent much faster, but they're getting very advanced data on these individuals that will help them make decisions. We've got companies that are scheduling interviews in day one of activating a position. Wow. That's, that's, that's it's extremely a much impressive. It's a much better experience uh, for the job seeker and the hiring manager and the corporate recruiter, if applicable. And look, you know, the average time to hire in Scouter is about 21 days. And this is a technology. This is across the board. These are roles that have been sitting out for – three, four, five, six months in some cases. And so so um, with the right level of data, with the right structure in your technology, uh, you can absolutely automate a lot of this waste from the process. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, Brandon, I, I, I've, I, as you, as you probably well know, because you, you have a finance background as well, but in, in my space, I have interviewed for for higher end management roles over the years, and it's interesting. And I'm not going to mention company names, but it, it's interesting that a a sizable uh, insurance company I was interviewing for a regional vice president role, and this was a few years back. And you know, I'll tell you, their hiring process was so archaic to me because of the fact that. They they took a step back, and I had three different people I interviewed with, and each interview was, so I applied. One month later, I heard that, 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 that we're going to schedule. Then one month later, I heard from the next one. Then, okay, you're, you're to the next phase. Then one month later, literally three-month process to interview with three different people, and then to find, okay, well, you're down. It's between you and two other people. So there's three people now. And, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to let you know, you know, what kind of the next phase is over the next few weeks. Another month. So four months in, by the time they even got to the end, I was literally like, you know what, I'm no longer interested. <laughs> like, this is, yeah. this is yeah. I mean, like, if you guys are doing this now, what are you going to do if I get offered the role and I accept the role? How are you guys being efficient working with advisors and agents and other people throughout the country that we need streamlined processes to be able to make things efficient. Like I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go, you know, put my, my, um, 
my integrity and my reputation on the line of 20 years of being in this industry to, to, to reach out to advisors and, and, and different professionals that would have been considered centers of influence for me when I don't even have faith going into it. So I got to think from the recruiting standpoint, I got to think you guys are making a big impact from the company side in, in that regard. I'm now curious though, obviously from a candidate perspective, you guys are probably making a pretty big impact as well because as you said, after the discovery, after that profile, I would assume, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that you're really uncovering for the candidate not only maybe a potential role, but maybe even a potential of what department they should be in or what role within that department are they best suited for to really maximize their potential to also benefit the company at the same time. I mean, I'm curious to just hear a little bit about that kind of thing that you guys have uncovered already. Yeah, that's a great point, right? This is really, um, back to your, your experience is unfortunate, right? And it's very common. Unfortunately, it's very common today. Uh, and, and what's happening, what's starting to happen in, in this pivot, if you will, we're, we're in a pivot, make no mistake, and, and it's happening. And companies are starting to feel the pinch, and they're, they're going to continue to feel the pinch until they make some adjustments. So uh, you have to look at candidates the same way, applicants, candidates, however you want to define your recruiting process. You have to start looking at those individuals the same way you do your customer or potential customer because this is an investment into your business. Mm -hmm. The same way marketing is to acquire revenue, you have to have the same level of resource and approach and commitment to your recruiting process. Right. This is that we're no longer in we're, we're no longer in the days that you just drop a roll out there, get 500 applicants, and, it's, you know, it's like the fish in the barrel thing, and, and, and nor should it be. So to, to address the candidate side, the first thing that candidates experience in Scouter is they get a better understanding about team culture and work style with creating their profiles. One of the other things we do, we allow them to upload a peer, a manager, a professor reference. Now, we don't call the references. Uh, the system automatically sends an intuitive survey that's very short and sweet to those uh, recipients, and then it updates your profile accordingly as those come in. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing there is we're building a dynamic, and this is I want to be I want to hit this point pretty hard. What Scouter is is really your dynamic, living, breathing, new age resume. This thing is scored. Your profile is scored automatically to every open role. So those employers see the level of your potential, team culture, work style, reference, as, and skill to their, their roles, all their roles. Furthermore, we just released about a month ago, you, as a candidate, now you can see where your top matches are. And so, and we allow you to see who the company is and uh, a, a description of that. And soon we're going to start opening, and again, the companies will be able, uh, will be able to opt in or out for this. You can already apply yourself to that role and uh, as if you are an applicant so to speak and uh, and you get the resources to to decide on doing that yourself as a candidate so you're not having to apply to a college you know, like a college graduate coming out of school having to apply to 100 150 jobs this is 2022 and you're having to we are having college graduates apply to dozens if not hundreds of, of positions it makes no sense yeah, yeah well, I agree. That, and, and more, more importantly, yeah, more importantly, these job seekers, early career stage, college grads, transitioning, maybe a stay-at-home mom who has transitioned, hasn't worked. She's raised two young kids over the past five, seven, eight, ten years. You know, that individual that wants to uh, get into the marketplace, this is an unfair system that we, that, you know, the, the, the legacy system, if you will, job boards and recruiting methodologies. It's unfair to so many people. So the one thing we wanted to do is have the candidate discover, because what is so cool about the discovery, which is creating your scouter profile, is it also prepares you for interviews. And 
the system is going to act as if it's your recruiter. Now, we've got some competition out there, your Indeed, your Zip Recruiters of the world, and I probably shouldn't mention them by name, but they do say in some of their marketing that they are full talent, life cycle, and or they represent, they are your new digital recruiter. Well, the problem with that is that they can't be, not in any real advanced way, not with just static resumes. No way. But we wanted to give that power of understanding, you know, discovery and culture, work style, skills, gaps, and correlations and transferabilities. We wanted to give that power back to the job seeker and, uh, of course, subsequently to uh, the, um, the, the employer as well. And we wanted to tear down these barriers between the two. And so for the candidate, it is important that they understand how this works. They understand more about how to uh, prepare for an interview, but also they need to understand, I don't need to focus on a hundred companies. Maybe I just need to focus on these top five. As for, you're, saying from, you're saying from a candidate standpoint. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's, again, we go back to the, yeah, yeah, we go back to the bilateral qualification. We're giving now both sides very advanced level sort of business intelligence, if you will, on where they should be focused as opposed to saying, okay, I'm a UX designer. I'm going to apply to these 65 UX designer roles in Detroit, Michigan right. over the weekend. Right. I have no idea who these companies are. I have no idea what their teams and managers or, or positions are like. I just know I have to apply. It just makes no sense. So for that individual, we say, come to Scouter. Let us show you how to do this and represent yourself at a much higher level. Yeah, that's uh... – that's interesting, Brandon, because I think that's a completely different perspective than most people, whether you're a company or a candidate, are really thinking about uh, the, the hiring and the recruiting process in today's world. Because I just think they're so focused on, you know, hey, we, we have LinkedIn, you know, like you said, you know, and I'll, I'll mention again, you, know, you have Indeed, you have the Zip Recruiter, and, and those are great. If you want what I will say, the bland, the old school, the archaics, you know, give me 20 resumes. But with what you're talking about, Brandon, with your software and your plan, I mean, you guys are doing something totally different than what was really out there in the industry. So I give you guys a lot of credit because I can personally say this because um, some of the things that I'm getting into on the financial planning side is utilizing things like artificial intelligence. And I know how that is a growing need and want in several industries. So I can't imagine as being able to utilize AI and artificial intelligence in the hiring and be able to make sure your candidates are looking at the best companies with the best roles available or the companies are focused on the best candidates for their roles available because you're utilizing the technology you guys have built and the artificial intelligence. I mean, I got to imagine it's, it's putting you guys in a completely different, um, I, I guess, level, I, I guess is the easiest way to describe it in, in your industry. So I give you a lot of credit for what you've done. Uh, I'm curious to, to, to kind of ask the last question as we start getting close to wrapping up. Where do you guys see the hiring space headed, and how do you guys feel that Scouter is positioned really well to be able to, to continue to grow and be a front runner in that space? Yeah, it's a great question, and thank you uh, for that. Um, I, 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 our, our team. Um, my, my business, I have a business partner who's got his PhD in behavioral science and, and human resources. Another, our CTO is, is a very, very seasoned technology leader who's, who's got a ton of experience in the AI and ML and NLP space. But where we see it going is this really, really high level harmony between the job seeker, candidate, applicant, whatever you want to call them. And, how, and, and the employer, specifically those hiring managers and or company administrators on the inside. The machine, if you will, the AI is no better than the data you give it, right? You can't just make decisions off of static resumes. You know, 75, 80% of resumes are embellished. Why wouldn't people embellish their resume? That's your, that's your that, you know, these documents have been around for 100 years. The only thing that's changed is how they're introduced to each other, right? It used to be... You, 
drop your resume off or mail your resume in and fax your resume. Now I can email it. Now I have to go through an applicant tracking system. And so the only thing that's changed is how the data comes together. But the data itself has not changed, and this is the problem. This has already happened in e-commerce, right? If Bezos and Amazon, they, what would have happened to them if they've gone down to the mom pop shop, ABC Supply, and said, "Hey, what do you think about this platform? We're going to we're going to tear down the barrier between the manufacturer and the consumer." Right. Well, what's happening is that barrier. So I keep mentioning that barrier. Current recruiting methodologies and processes, and in most cases, the very tools that are being used are part of the problem. They are archaic, they are legacy, they are, they are methodically not appropriate any longer. So what I see happening is really the rise of natural language processing and machine learning, at it, the it, it broader, term, broader term AI, being applied to automating those barriers out of the way with a much higher standardization of discovery. So the very nature of the position description and the resume are going to become much more advanced, and that's the future. People should not be measured off of a one, two, three page document that you created for yourself. Now, yeah, that's a good introductory tool, but four months to get an interview or to get a final offer, it's, not, it's, it's, it's completely outrageous. Yeah. Now, C-suite executives, sure, sure, take your time. Those, those hires take some time. But UX designer, SaaS sales, you know, um, data scientist, uh, maybe an executive admin, you should be able to make, you can make those decisions in days, not months. Yeah. And so I, I think that the entire market is going into this new realm of machine learning and NLP, but what is going to be very uh, different about this is going to be the experience that people have to go through to get a position, whether you're a senior or whether you're an entry level, uh, that's what's going to change. You're, you're seeing the rise. And look, AI has been in this space for a long time, and it's highly ineffective because the machine does not know what data is accurate or not. It has no idea. Yeah, yeah, it's spitting out pattern recognition based. Well, it's 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 it's, it's, it's false. It's false. I mean, so it's spitting out pattern recognition, if you will, or what we refer to as decision tree logic. If your first decision is inaccurate then your second decision is going to be inaccurate and so forth and so on. And what I mean by inaccuracy, there's a difference between reliability and accuracy in, in the research, right? Something can be very reliable but be inaccurate. Right. So to have reliability and accuracy, your discoveries, your inputs have to be rock solid. And so if you take out the gamification, if you take out the, the bad motivation of, say, the broker, if you will, and you're really – start to instill the standardization of, of discovery, really focus on what culture is and, and, and styles and skills, gaps, correlations, and, and, and transferabilities, then you can really start to solve this problem, and that's what we've done. So I think the future, uh, what you're going to see is a, over the next decade, a wave of new products like Scout are coming into the industry because it's not only the right thing to do for all parties, but it's inevitable. It's happened in almost every other industry out there, e-commerce, MarTech, ad tech, ed tech, so forth and so on. It's going to happen here, and it's long overdue. You know, and it's interesting, and, and I don't disagree with you. I think it's definitely long overdue in a lot of ways. But, you know, you and I were just talking uh, the other day, and I think you mentioned to me, when we, when we talked, uh, you know, back in March, I know, you know, you were, you were kind of telling me, okay, we have X number of companies in the platform. And when we talked the other day, just in the last three months, did, did I do my numbers right? Did you guys add 20% increase just in the companies that are now on, on your platform in the last three months? Yes. Yes. A little more than 20% increase uh, between Q1 and Q2. And that should continue to increase in the Q3 and Q4. And that applies also to the candidates as well as the companies. As a matter of fact, uh, we're starting to see a much higher uptick in the candidate adoption, uh, which is natural, right? You're going to get a lot more adoption there uh, right. first. And, and, you know, this, this is the chicken and the egg problem, right? We don't see it that way, although that's, you have to think about it some, sometimes that way. Uh, the position is the chicken or is it the egg? And it's the right. candidate, the chicken or the egg. Well, we think they kind of come together, right? We think that – 
more more candidates create more opportunity for companies and more companies create more opportunities for candidates, but we feel strongly that this is where they should be. Now, we spent the last three years in validating through beta. We wanted to see how companies and candidates used it. We wanted to get their feedback. We've embedded and implemented a lot of new technology in the front end interface to help people make it easier to create profiles, make it easier to uh, for data visualization to understand what's actually going on in the back end, right? This is this the system is very smart, and so we built the brains of it first, and now we're catching the front end or the user experience or interface up to that that processing power and that intelligent power. And it's typically the absolute reverse of what most companies do. Most companies build a clever front end. There's no real intelligence going on there. We did the exact opposite. We built something with staying power. And we were not in a big rush. We wanted to make sure that it worked. And we wanted to also make sure that, that people would use it and, and, and they would find it resourceful and helpful and it was it would be an asset for them. And so um, these things are very difficult. When you're making a move like this, you're labeled as a disruptor. I get that. Yeah. But at the same time, our, our mission has always been the same, to bring a much higher standardization uh, of resource to the job seeker and the companies. And and um, we have never wavered. We've always worked off that premise. That's our, that's our tenet. It's basically how we look at this problem is always an absolute commitment and focus to our user. Wow. Well, it's, uh, this has been, uh, it, you know, this has been a little eye opening for me as well. And hopefully for some of our other listeners. Uh, so Brandon, I'm going to wrap up with so obviously, I know, you know, and, and some of the other listeners have heard as well. I mean, you, you guys are definitely in growth mode. I mean, 20, you had 20% more companies from Q1 to Q2. So whether it's someone that could be looking for your services uh, as a company or as a candidate or someone that could be looking for an opportunity even within Scouter, because I know you guys are, I know you mentioned to me, you guys are looking to add one or two uh, salespeople. I know you're looking to add some other people over the next you know, few months because of how much you're growing. And I mean, obviously, the, the growth potential within Scouter, I know, is, is pretty big at this point. So what is the best way for someone to get a hold of you, uh, whether they're interested in discussing services or, or they could be a potential job candidate? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to talk to anyone out there, candidate and or company. Uh, we will go above and beyond to help them. If it's just a conversation about how they can help themselves in a better way, uh, I can be reached at B Stevens, B S T E V E N S at Scouter, S C O U T R dot team. And, um, and our website is, is Scouter dot team as well. Uh, but again, B Stevens at Scouter dot team, info at Scouter dot team. Uh, will come to either myself or David as well, or and or Michael. And so, um, then go check us out on LinkedIn at Scouter. Again, we are the real Scouter, S C O U T T R. Uh, and so, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, f- feel free to connect with me. Uh, feel free to email me uh, as well. We are happy to help. It, maybe it's just a quick discovery call to, to help you through a through a, either a hiring issue or a job search issue. We're we're, we're here. We're here to help. Well. Thanks. Uh, appreciate that, Brandon. And it's uh, it's been great, uh, great talking to you. Um, you know, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, and uh, everyone, thanks for listening to the Inspired Business Leaders podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth. And uh, hope to talk to you. And I hope everyone's listening very soon. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks, Nick. Thank you for listening to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show, or to listen to past episodes, visit www.inspiredbusinessleaderspodcast.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.